Okay, so let's talk about our next two array methods. One of them is going to be every and the other one is going to be sum. So let's get our app script editor started. There we are. I'm going to create an array. So as always, I'll start with a very basic array and go from there. So here we go. So now I'm going to take that array and I'm going to use a method on that call every and every method will take a function. So I'll have the function here right inside of this. And this function is going to pass an argument. We'll call it num. Now let's create a variable results and then we'll log those results. Right here. Okay, so here we are. Let's see how this works. So every method is built to check if every single element in your array is passing a condition. So let's see an example of that. I'm going to say return num greater than six. So I'm checking if every single element in this array will pass this condition. And my condition is, is my element greater than six? Now this one is not. So most of them are not with exception of seven, right? We should get a false. So let's see what we get. I'm going to run this. Okay, let's see what we get. So we got false. So let's check if it's greater than three. Again, See, not every element in this array is greater than three. A lot of them are, like these three are, but not all of them. So if we run this, look at this, it's still false. Now, if I check if everything is less than nine, now see every single element is less than nine. So if we run, we return true because every single one is actually less than nine. So the idea of this is this, we're giving it a return results that's either true or it's false, right? So you can create an if statement instead of doing this. So you could say if num is less than nine, then let's return true else let's return false. So if I run this, still the same thing, right? So it's just not necessary to do this. It's a lot easier to just do return this because that's going to return either true or false by itself. So getting back to this, so this is what's going to happen. We get this one. So we're going to first one here. So just to illustrate our results. So first one is less than nine. So we get true. Then the second one, which is two is also less than nine. So we get true. The third one is less than nine. We get true. So we keep getting all this truths. So in the end, what every is doing, if every single one of these is true, then the whole thing is true. If at least one of these ends up being false, one or more, now this whole thing is going to be false. And that's the results we're getting with every. Now, similar to every, there is also sum. So sum is similar in the way it works to every. The only difference is now we're checking if at least one element is passing the condition. So right now, if I run this is number less than nine, every single one is less than nine. So this should be true. True. See? So if I say is number less than three, I have at least two that are less than three. So this should also return true. And if I simply just say, is it equal to four? 
Well, I have at least one number that's four, so this will pass that condition. So if at least this one is passing this, then the whole thing should be true again. Still true, see? And finally, let's get a case of false, right? I'm gonna say eight. Now there's not a single number that's passing this condition. So this should be false. In a way, every is and condition and sum is or condition. With every, you have and condition, which means every single one of those arguments that you're passing needs to be true. And or means at least one of them needs to be true and the whole thing will pass. Now let's do this as usual with a two dimensional array. So now I have this two dimensional array. If I do every, well, now this number is no longer a number. It's this array. Every time we're passing one of these arrays. So I'm just gonna call this R for row, thinking this is one of our rows. Doesn't have to be, but usually with Google Sheets, we'll think about this as a row. And now in that row, I can say is row zero zero is what this one the first element i'm gonna say is that equal to b so if i run this it should say false the reason it's false is because every that means every single one of these should have been b so the only time this should have been true is when our array is like this See, true because every single one of them is B, so we get true for every single one of those logical statements. Now, let's use the numbers. So number is the second index in this array, and we'll say if that number is greater than five, now every single one of these is greater than five, so this should get us true, right? Yep, and if I do, is it greater than seven? Well, one of them is greater than seven, but the rest aren't. So false, right? And the same way if I do sum, well, at least one of them is greater than seven, so this should be true. And it is. And that's our every and sum. Now let's try to use it on this spreadsheet. Uh, this piece of data. So if you look through this data, basically it's not a very organized data. So we have a lot of blank rows in the middle of this data. Let's try to clean it up. So what we're going to do, we're going to try to first delete every row that's blank out of this data set. If you look, see we have some blank cells in the middle. I don't want to delete those. I only want to delete the ones where the whole row is blank. Okay, so let's get to our script. I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff. Now I'm gonna first access my spreadsheet. Then we'll create our active sheet. And then in this active sheet, we'll get our data range, which is starting from the second row and all the way down to an array. Var O data for original data. We're gonna go to our active sheet, get range, start from the second row, column one, and then how many rows going from the bottom, 204. So 204 rows minus the label on top, that's 203. 
So I can do this, but instead I'm gonna get this 203 dynamically by simply taking our active sheet and getting my last row minus one. So last row is gonna give us that same number we used to get there, which was this 204 and then minus one should get us to two or three. So that's that. And finally, the number of columns. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we'll get values and that should create an array of our data for us. Now let's just quickly take a look at this and see what it looks like. Always a good idea to kind of step through to see what's going on. So if you look, see, this is our data. Now, just to refresh your memory, we had some blank rows, right? So over here, the first one is this one, right after this Columbus, Ohio. So if we look here, See, there's that Columbus, Ohio. And if you look, there's this array of blanks right here. So that's one of the arrays we need to get rid of. Now, we need to basically filter out every row that's completely blank. So I need to use filter function because I'm filtering this, right? So I'm gonna take my old data dot filter if you don't know about filter function, then you should watch my filter video. Now filter function will take a callback function and callback will be a row. We're gonna pass a row to this function. It's gonna basically go through different rows and every time we return true, it's gonna keep the row Every time we return false, it's gonna remove the row. What we're going to do, since this row is gonna be this entire row, which is in our log, it's an array, right? So for example, the first time it's gonna be this array, the first one. So in this array, we need to check if everything is blank. And the way to do it is by using every, right? Because every will check if every single argument is passing the condition. I'm gonna do every, and here we're gonna do another callback function. And in this callback function, we'll just pass in a row, just to have some separation of variable names, in a row, and we'll say equals double quotes. So we're gonna return that, which means this is gonna check if the row argument is blank. Actually, let's just call this cell because it's not exactly an inner row because we're checking every single cell. So we're passing a row and in the cell, we're gonna check if the cell is blank. And if all of them are blank, this every is gonna return true. So if we simply return, this, which is gonna give us true when every single one is blank. Then it's gonna keep the blank ones only. So this is not what we're looking for, but let's see the results of this. So if I log this, oh, you know what? We need to log the data. See what we're getting is all the blank rows because what's going to happen, this is gonna return true every time every single one of them is blank, right? So what we're going to do, we need to just flip our results, right? Because what we're getting right now is just the ones that are blanks. We need the opposite. So to do the opposite, I'm gonna take this. This returns our true or false based on this every. I'm gonna do an exclamation sign and that will basically just switch truths to falses and falses to truths. So let's see what we get. I'm gonna run this. Log. See all the blank rows in the middle. Now they're gone. 
So now that we've done this, we need to take our new data and remove the old one and place the new data here without all the blanks. To do this, I first have to clean this up. So I'm going to go to my active sheet. I'm going to do get range and we're going to start. And to make this simpler, I'm just going to use regular string syntax. So that's from A2 through G all the way down. So I'm going to do A2 through G. And then I'm going to simply just clear content. That will clean it up. Now, after it's clean, we'll take our active sheet, get range. We need to place our new data where it's supposed to go. We're going to start placing this in here in this cell. That's second row, first column. So two, one. And then we'll calculate the rest in this data dynamically. Data dot length, comma, data zero dot length. I've done this many times before. If you don't understand this, watch my previous videos. I cover this. So I'm going to do set values and we're going to set values to this data range. Semicolon. I don't need to log this out anymore. Save. I'm going to run this. Go take a look. See all the blank rows are now gone. Nice. You can see how the blank cells are staying here. So we're not removing blank cells. We're removing blank rows. I'm going to undo this. Now, what if I wanted to remove every single row where there is a blank? I don't want to remove where the whole thing is blank. I want to remove where at least one cell is blank. So that means I need to remove this one. I also need to remove this one. Also this one, also this one, and also this one, right? So to do this, what we'll have to do, instead of using every, we're going to use some, right? So if I change this to some, what's going to happen, this is going to give me true if at least one of them is blank. And then if we take that and reverse that for our filter, that should just work. So that's the only thing I should need to change here. Let's look at our data. This is what it looks like. I go back and run, go back, take a look. See every single row where there was a blank cell, it's gone. And that's our every and some methods. That should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.